today is another bright new day that the Lord has made and we are going to rejoice in it and be glad in it as we study his word. And like always, we're going to be explaining another often confusing question. So I hope you've got a pen, a paper, and your Bible. And let's get started. What does it mean to be a godly mother? What does it mean to be a godly mother? A godly mother is a woman who represents the heart of Christ to her children. And she's continually aware of of our influence over the lives and the futures of our people. And she makes sacrifices whenever necessary for their welfare. And also godly mothers are first godly women. They are not one way at home and another way in public. Even when our children do not have a godly father, her, uh, this, this mother can have a great impact on our children's spiritual future. And uh, I'm going to give you a couple of characteristics of a godly mother so that you can all be able to understand exactly who she is and uh, how we can be like that. All right? So number one, a godly mother knows God because uh, she wants her children to be godly. She always leads the way. And a mother cannot pass on to her children values and qualities that she does not possess. So the first step in becoming a godly mother is surrendering to the Lordship of Jesus. And only then is our soul restored. The Bible tells us in the book of Psalms 23 verse 3, He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Apart from just being restored uh, by God, then also we have to understand that her life should be recreated as well by God because the Bible tells us, 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. And our mind is also renewed. Romans 12 verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what that is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Number two, a godly woman, she, uh, she should be someone who understands her role in marriage and in the family. This is because as part of sin's uh, curse, Women struggle with wanting to control their husbands. But remember, the Bible says in uh, Genesis 3.16, Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception, and in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Alright, so, you see, because of uh, that rule, most of them, they they don't want <laughs> All right. So, something else that you have to understand is that God decreed that husbands and fathers should carry the weight of responsibility for their families. And uh, that should also be well understood by the, by the woman. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 3, But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. So a godly wife will gracefully bow to that leadership and model her children. God, godly submission to authority. Even when husbands and fathers are not worthy of such respect, godly mothers do not badmouth them to the children. Divorced or single mothers can be godly mothers as they teach their children. God's plan for marriage and demonstrate purity and wisdom in their own dating relationships. Number three, she does not neglect her own health and well-being. All right. Often we equate personal martyrdom uh, with humility and service, but in need 
not be that way godly mothers model uh for their children healthy self respect and boundaries and a godly mother knows that wearing herself out acting as a slave to her children is not good for anyone she will give selflessly to her children but she will also carve out time to rejuvenate herself because she knows that if she is not healthy then her children will also suffer number 4 a godly woman seizes teachable moments to instill biblical truth why because a godly mother is not supposed to be focused on uh you know meeting physical needs that she ends up neglecting her real calling which is to raise future disciples of Christ Ephesians 6:4 and ye fathers provoke not your children to wrath but bring them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord and Proverbs 22 verse 6 he says train up a child in the way he should go and when he's old he will not depart from it because she walks in close harmony with God she is easily directing her children's attention to his work in their lives so this golden woman she may say to a 3 year old for example let me give you an example she can say and like what you see that beautiful robin god who loves us made that bird for us to enjoy thank you god for your beautiful birds she may say also to a pretty Hey dear, I'm sorry you didn't make to the team. I know it hurts, but remember God has something bigger in store for you. So trust him with even this disappointment. So those those are kind of the the, the words and the things that a godly woman should instill in the minds of the children so that they can know how to trust in God. Number 5. A godly woman models service to God and others because children need reminders that they were created for God and serving him is their highest calling colossians 1:16 it says for he, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him So definitely a godly mother will demonstrate this in her own life as, as she involves her children in serving others. For example, and I quote, you can say, let's finish this so we can make some dinner for you know John's family because they are going through a hard time and we want to remind them about that Jesus has not forgotten them. You see such kind of words These are the kind of things that a godly mother should instill to their children because the bible tells us in the book of acts uh, 9 verse 36 to 41 it gives us a picture of something here that is really really important for us to know think about this the bible says now there was a jopper a certain disciple named tabitha which by interpretation is called dockers and this woman was full of good works and arms did which she did and it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died and when they had washed they laid her in an upper chamber and for as much as Lydia was uh, nigh to Joppa and the disciples that heard that Peter was there they sent unto him two men desiring him that he would not delay to come to them then Peter rose and went with them and when he was come they they brought him into the upper chamber and all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the coats and garments which dockers made while she was with them but peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed and turning to him the to the body said tabby the rise and she opened her eyes and when she saw peter she sat up and he gave her his hand and lifted her up and when he had called her the saints and the widows presented Uh, alive now think about this story i want you to think about this story now this one 
It gives us a glimpse into the life of Tabitha, who was known for her good deeds. When she died, many townspeople brought out the garments she had made for them as evidence of her kindness. Because a godly mother leaves the evidence of her kindness and her children are proud of her reputation. Matthew 5.16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Number six, a godly woman has a healthy self-image. Why? This is because many women in our culture struggle with self-worth due to childhood wounds or comparison with the others. And a godly mother has learned to see herself as godly, as the way God would want to see her. Because of this, she can demonstrate to her children the way a godly woman should present herself. And godly mothers see themselves as uh, active participants in God's work and they don't try to gain attention or a sense of worthiness through dress or behavior or relational status. Think about this, 1 Peter 3, 3-4. The Bible says this, Whoso adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold and of putting on apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight. Hmm. So a godly mother acts and dresses modestly. She models proper God-honoring behavior to her children. And of course, Proverbs 31 tells us that a woman is a picture of a godly mother. Although she puts her children and her husband first, they are not her entire world. She develops her gifts and uses them to benefit her family and her community. She is a credit to her husband and a role model to her children. She lives with integrity at home and in public, and she presents herself honorably. And of course, in verse 8 gives us the result of her years as a faithful mothering. After she has poured her life into them, the children will rise up and call her blessed. And that's the end of our today's Bible study lesson. Hope it was a blessing to you. Hope you've uh, learned something. You can always uh, download this podcast to listen later offline or share to your friends and family. And don't you forget to favorite or subscribe to our channel to always be notified whenever you post a uh, a new podcast and if you like to support this ministry please you you can use the details in the description below otherwise i hope to see you in the next one